In this video, I will talk about what is procurement and some important key concepts you need to know about supply chain management, logistics, and the world of procurement. Are you ready? Let's learn logistics. Today, we will define the role of procurement and the procurement team in a company and describe the process of converting purchase requisitions into purchase orders. It is important to keep in mind that procurement is also responsible for researching and approving suppliers as qualified bidders who can provide materials and products use in manufacturing and for resale to customers. Now, as usual, let's start with the textbook definition. Procurement is defined as the act of obtaining goods and services typically for business purposes. Procurement is most commonly associated with businesses because companies need to secure services and purchase goods in order to sell a product or provide a service themselves. Procurement generally refers to the final act of purchasing, but it can also include the overall procurement process. This is particularly important for companies because it leads up to the final purchase decision making. Please note that companies can be on both sides of the procurement process, as buyers or as sellers. Next, let's see how procurement works. Procurement and procurement processes can require a substantial portion of a company's resource to manage. Procurement budgets typically provide managers with a specific value they can spend to procure the goods or services they need. The process of procurement is often a key part of a company's strategy. This is because that provides the ability to purchase certain materials or services that can determine if your operations will be profitable. Now, the procurement team is dependent on procurement requisitions. Let me say that again. The procurement team is dependent on procurement requisitions. These procurement requisitions are fed from the demand planning team. Now, quick side note, if you haven't already, Check out our other video on demand planning so you know exactly what it is and how it relates to our topic today. The demand plan tells or signals the procurement team to initiate the purchasing of what is needed by listing what is required. With the use of technology nowadays, this is done by transmitting these requirements in an ERP system that stands for Enterprise Resource Planning System. Now, this is important to know because without the connection to the demand plan, procurement would not know what to buy or when to buy it. The demand plan considers when items are needed in inventory against the supplier's lead time. Lead time is the time it takes for a supplier to deliver goods after you place an order. An easier way to look at this is with the example of baking a cake. Say you decide to bake a cake for a friend's birthday party. You're excited to show off your latest cake recipe, which you know will be a total hit. But there are a few things that you need to know before you start baking. Your friend Sarah is organizing the party. So she is the party planner in this example. She will have to determine how many people will attend the party, how much food will be needed, and when and where the party will take place. Now, once Sarah has determined all of these details, she will have to inform everyone else what the final plans will be. This is where you, the cake maker, can start making some decisions on your cake plans. Now, why now and not before? Well, you need to know how many people will attend, so you know how many ingredients you need to make enough cake for everyone. You also need to know when the party will be, so you can prepare the cake in time for the party, but not too far in advance that it spoils. You also need to know where it will be, so you can get the cake to the party's location. This is an easier way to look at the connection between the demand plan and procurement. Sarah is the party planner in this example. She is part of the demand planning team in the company. She tells everyone the details of what, when, and where products, materials, and parts are needed to be secure for our production to take place. You are the cake baker and you are the procurement team in this example. Also the production team because you're making the cake. As part of the procurement, your demand planning team, aka Sarah, tells you the final details of the party so you can go ahead and buy the ingredients for the cake based on the number of party goers attending. 
Here you make the choices to where to buy those ingredients and when to have them ready for the production of your cake. Finally, as a production team, you're also responsible for making the cake and transporting it to the right place at the right time of the party. Now we have to understand that procurement processes will be dictated by company standards, which are often centralized by controls from the accounts payable division of accounting. The procurement process includes the preparation and processing of a demand, as well as the end receipt and approval of payment. Comprehensively, this can also involve purchase planning, standards, specification determinations, supplier research, selection, financing, price negotiation, and even inventory control. Finally, let's discuss why is procurement important and what are the types of procurement? Now, procurement is an important step in understanding supply chains as a whole because it helps a company find reliable suppliers that can provide competitively priced goods and services that match the company's needs. That's the case whether the company is seeking raw materials for manufacturing or an internet service providers or even new office supplies. For example, if a company needs a new supplier to provide an ongoing service for an indefinite period of time, such as an internet service provider, the procurement process helps the company choose the supplier that best meets all of the business requirements at a reasonable price. What this really does is help the business save time, money, and valuable resources by not having to deal with any inadequate suppliers. Minimizing cost is also one of the most important aspects of improving your procurement processes. But it is also vital to identify suppliers that provide the quality of goods and services that the company needs and have the capacity to deliver reliably and have a proven track record of doing so. Now, let's look at the types of procurement. Now, procurement can be categorized in several ways, and it can really be modified to fit each company individually. However, generally procurement can be classified as direct or indirect. That's depending on how the company will use the items being procured. It can also be further categorized as goods or services procurement, depending on the items that are being procured. Direct procurement refers to obtaining anything that's required to produce an end product. For a manufacturing company, this includes raw materials and components. For a retailer, it includes any items purchased from a wholesaler to resell to customers. Indirect procurement typically involves purchases of items that are essential for day-to-day -day operations, but don't directly contribute to a company's bottom line or go directly into the final product. This can include anything from office supplies and furniture to advertising campaigns, consulting services, and even equipment maintenance. Goods procurement largely refers to the procurement of physical items, but it can also include items like software subscriptions. Effective goods procurement generally relies on good supply chain management practices, and it may include both direct and indirect procurement. Now, services procurement focuses on procuring people-based services. Depending on the company, this may include hiring individual contractors, contingent labor, law firms, or on-site maybe security services. It may also include both direct and indirect procurement. Well, that was a lot of information, and I hope it helped you understand procurement and its role in the supply chain a little bit better. Feel free to give us a like, subscribe to our channel for more videos like these. I'm Professor Rodriguez. Thanks for watching, and until the next time.